Very good to welcome the Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, my good friend, back to number 10 Downing Street. We were here together six months ago. We talked about how we're going to work together in Europe and make sure we have a European Union that works for our citizens. And you said you'd come back in six months' time and you're back on the top of that. No, we do need real change in Europe. Uh, we need to make sure it's more competitive, more flexible. We need to make sure that we get more people into work. Uh, we make sure that uh, we do the important work of the future, such as uh, deals with um, uh, the Americans over this uh, free trade partnership. I'm sure we'll discuss that today. But also, there's a very warm bilateral relationship between Britain and Italy. Uh, we've worked together on many issues, both NATO partners uh, as well. And I'm sure we'll be discussing today the situation in Ukraine, the situation in Libya, the appalling situation. Uh, in Syria and Iraq with ISIL, so we have a lot to talk about, but a very strong partnership between our countries and a very strong partnership between ourselves. Matteo. Thank you, David, and uh, for me, obviously, it's a big pleasure to be here with you and the Prime Minister. It's absolutely important for us to stress and align uh, the, the, the position for a different Europe, for a Europe more, more uh, light, more uh, smart, and Europe are able to come back to real substance of the message of our fathers. And uh, about this point, I think we, we can absolutely work together with the uh, UK and uh, Prime Minister Cameron. This is the first. <clears throat> also in direction in the, in the very important uh, um, initiatives in this moment for Europe. Uh, not only in our continent, but also in the relation with the TTIP, uh, with the USA, in uh, the foreign politics, uh, as David said, uh, very clearly. Second, obviously, uh, for me, this is a particularly important because uh, six months ago, I was just uh, nominated as Prime Minister. Uh, a lot of investors uh, in the city of London told me, ah, the problem in Italy is the lack of respect of timeline in the reforms process. And uh, so I promised them uh, uh, six months after today I came back to London. It was uh, April 2nd, now it's October 2nd. And, uh, thank you for the, 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 the disponibility uh, of David. I came back exactly in the same day. First of all, to speak with uh, David, then uh, to present the results of reforms. And thirdly, it's absolutely important this month because we have a lot of initiatives also as Italian presidency, uh, and uh, we wait for David uh, in uh, Milan uh, for the um, initiative with the Asia and the European uh, countries, uh, very important also for uh, relation, and I think this could be a great opportunity also to improve uh, our relation. Congratulations also to the Prime Minister for result uh, in the referendum uh, in, uh, after Scotland, I think. And this is a very important day, not for UK, but for Europe. And uh, for this reason, I'm particularly happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. you are very welcome here today. And may I now invite you to join me on the dais. Lord Mayor, thank you so much for your invitation, for your kind uh, words. And I'm a real, really, for me it's a really emotional moment because uh, this building uh, is uh, a building rich of history and I think is a building rich of future. And uh, this is the great challenge also for my country, rich of history rich of, rich of future. And uh, I see also the, 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 the flag of City of London with the same colors of my city, red and uh, white, the same, exactly the same flag of uh, Florence, the first flag of uh, my city, Florence. So I, I'm really emotional, but it's at the same time 
this is a, a building of history, so I'm, I'm exactly as in my Florence. In the past, uh, was a capital of finance, but this is another, this is a different uh, uh, story. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear Lord Mayor, thank you, thank you for uh, having me here. I'm glad to have this uh, occasion, the occasion to try and explain to such a distinguished audience what is happening in my country, what is uh, the ambition of uh, our government and uh, the vision we want to turn into reality. You work a critical genre of the world economy. You know, perhaps better than many others, what impressive transformative power can the economy have. Mostly this power translates into progress and wealth. Yet, especially after 2008, I think that even though the finance heart of Europe, it's clear that we need strong politics, able to deliver useful and good policy, and able to show a vision, a vision to follow. I think that the world needs more politics in this moment. Very, very, very difficult. Events as the eastern borders of European Union have reminded us that economic integration is never enough. Events in Libya, in the Middle East, the threat of ISIS are all reminded us of that. We don't need an invasive public domain impinging on economic and social freedoms. This is not our goal. But we need a strong leadership in this world in this moment. I was not the, here in the city when Wally comes to talk business, only business, and uh, I will speak only about business. But, uh, however, the only way to steer economic policy in a way that makes sense to the people and uh, in a way that uh, ultimately works is to be driven by a clear political vision. I have two key messages for you today in this direction. First of all, change in Italy has just started. We have been in office for little more than seven months, and I think we can be satisfied with what we have accomplished. But however, much more is still to come. We have a lot of reforms to complete. And we are absolutely sure this is the big challenge, a great challenge for our country. In May, we have been given by the electorate a larger mandate to change, to change the way our country operates. Change will be deep and comprehensive. The people choose change because 41% decide to vote for my party. This is the first time after 56 years it's an incredible result for Italian politics. The second message is that this change will allow Italy to be a strong protagonist in the global economy. We are a big ambition. We are absolutely sure if Italy finally realizes reforms, Italy will be in the next 10 years again leader in Europe. Our dream is not make something necessary to save Italy. This is not our ambition. Our ambition is come back Italy to leader, to leadership in Europe and around the world. It's important to remember that despite uh, all the economic problems, Italy is still, is still the second manufacturing country of Europe, the sixth in the world. Even recent data on export show that, despite a very difficult context, Italian companies are very compet competitive. Despite the traditional approach of Italian politics, I think the globalization is the most incredible opportunity for my country. Despite the traditional discussion in talk show and in the between members of parliament, 
Globalization is for Italy the most important asset for the future. Because world ask beauty and ask quality, and Italy could be an answer in this direction, not a threat, but a chance, a change, a possibility. Of course, average results of our economy and the Eurozone are far from satisfactory, are negative in this moment for Italy. This is the first problem. But we offer a vision to solve this uh, very delicate moment. For this reason, we are putting forward many reforms and economic growth. However, this is only the first part of the story. Italy, in, this, uh, in the last nearly 20 years, lost the opportunity to grow. We're certainly still one of the strongest and the most sophisticated economies in the world, but we must change deeply if we want to turn around the trend of the last 20 years. We were elected on the motto cambia verso, the slang cambia, the expression cambia verso, which means no less than turn around. Turn around from 20 years of fear for change in order to embrace change. Turn around from 20 years where ants and the lobbies at the upper end in order to promote competition and the general interest. Turn around from a common sense focused on the great Italian past. But our dream is build a great future. We love our past. It's incredible. It's a past of masterpieces, of painting, of arts, of culture. We love our present for tourism, for quality of life, for food, for wine, for fashion, yes. But we are absolutely sure our mission now is love our future. A future of high quality, innovation, technology. A future in which Italy could be a place of hope, not a place of remember. We put forward many different reforms I would like to entertain you about. I will I will enter in some detail, but first, let me underline what is the difference between us and our past. First, we have a strong popular mandate to change. Last May, we received the, the most significant result in Italy since 1958, and we are the most vote party in the European Union. 11.2 billion votes, the second CDU of Angela Merkel, 10.6. The really extraordinary thing is that we obtain this result by pleading to change in Italy and uh, of this to change Europe. Italy and Italians want to change. Italians no longer trust lobbies and vested interest groups. Each time we manage to implement a fourth step of change, we feel more support around us. The second point, the second key feature of our government relates to our policy. Our economic platform is respectful of international agreements that we crucially contribute to determine. However, our economic platform is crafted around the actual reality of our country. It is designed on the basis of the economic reality of our production structure and of the needs of our people. We respect also for 2015 the parameters, the vehicle of Maastricht, 3%. We respect all the countries who decided don't respect this vehicle. And I think if Europe is a community of destiny, and not a place of teacher, a student, nobody, nobody could use expression without respect for the countries who decide don't respect this vehicle, this parameter. We, Italy, we decide to respect 3% also next year because we think in this moment is absolutely important to maintain a message of reputation for a country. And so we give a message of respect of Maastricht law rules. 
but we ask for respect also for the people who, who will surpass this 3%. We have started to implement, and we will implement important change. Change will be disruptive. Lobbyists, vested interest, entrenched groups have to fear our action. We will take action on the basis <clears throat> of what we perceive to be the general interest without responding to special interests that blocked Italy for so long. Let me now start with telling you about the reform of our political institutions. We have started a process leading to the largest constitutional change since the start of Republic. While the values and the principle of democracy remain steady and strong, the way our institutions operate is in disparate need of updating. The main reasons for doing so we have to do with trust, with trust we need to restore. The trust is the first goal. The trust of citizens, the trust of public opinion, the trust in direction of politicians, I, I believe in the politics, but it's not very easy to believe in politicians when politicians have a lot of privilege, respect the normal people. So trust between the elected politicians and the people. Trust that democracy can work. Democracy can be efficient. Democracy can deliver answers to the people and the governments can be held accountable. It's very strange. Italian people present here knows a little problem of our vocabulary. In Italy, we are lack of tra translation of expression accountability. I think our goal is create a possibility of accountability for democracy in the time of uh, vetocracy, power of ve veto. We must absolutely give this message. We, accountability is our priority. In Italy, we need the increased trust, and a large part of my action is focused in this direction. Let me underline, however, another aspect. We need institutional reform also to improve economic growth. Economists in the last 30 years have explained us that economic growth depends ultimately on institution. They explain uh, us that inclusive, transparent, and accountable institutions are a strong in possibility to innovation and economic progress. Instead, opaque institutions, complicated decision-making process are institutions that promote rents and inefficiency. The process of constitutional change in Italy will take about a year. This is why we have secured the first step as early as we could. This change will streamline the process of lawmaking law by focusing the competence of the parliament to one single chamber, as the case in all European countries. We will simplify and clarify the competence of local governments versus the national government which is very important in order to clarify responsibility. This is very important also for investors. I sign in a few circumstances the laws to permit an investor to realize a public initiative or private initiative in some region against this project. This is the problem of not very clear relation between national government and regional government. With this constitutional change, the possibilities for investors will be absolutely better. Third, we will reform the electoral law so that after each election, winners and losers will be clearly identified. I know this is not very clear for an English and American people. But in Italy, 
after the electoral campaign, after the vote, nobody is a loser. Everybody wins. In the talk show after elections, you can see a lot of people who said, I am the winner. I am the winner. With the new electoral law and the second turn and the second vote, in Italian expression, ballottaggio, will be clear, the winner and the losers. And the winner will be responsible for five years of everything. This is absolutely important as a message of uh, stability. Political institutions are the pinnacle of our states. However, we are changing governance structures also in many other domains. We are reforming the way our public administration works to improve the speed of procedures, to enhance meritocracy and efficiency, fight against red tape of bureaucracy. This is our priority. We have started a large consultation on the modernization of the school system to make it closer to the need of a modern economy and a changing society. I believe Italy of next 10 years will be not depending on the ideas of prime minister, on the ideas of mm, responsible of finance. I'm sorry. I'm absolutely sure Italy in the next 10 years will be exactly in the same, in the way believed are built by teachers. We must invest in the quality of education. Education, education, education is the future of a country. At the same time, the judicial system reform is under discussion to reduce the duration of trials. Also because uh, in this moment, UK, France, Germany, and USA have a time for the first, for the first uh, sentence in civil justice, more or less of one year. In Italy, in this moment, the time is uh, 945 days. So I signed a decree to reduce, to invest in the technology, digitalization of process, digitalization of trial. I signed a decree to reduce the time of uh, trials. But this is absolutely important not only for enhance out of court proceeding as well as a compulsory mediation, but also with a big investment in digitalization of civil trials. An empowered anti-corruption authority is already active to guarantee a safer, transparent and accountable business environment. This is a new. I ask uh, Raffaele Cantone, judge uh, who come from Naples, who fought against uh, Camorra and Mafia, and I ask him to become the president with the vote of all parliaments of uh, authority anti-corruption for the first time in the history of Italy. Cutting red tape is another challenge on which the government has already acted. For example, providing for compulsory mobility for public employers and making the turnover more flexible. We are working to evolve the fiscal system in direction of greater fairness and transparency and become simpler and more growth oriented with measures that will be operational from the end of March 2015. All these measures will have a clear and the positive impact on economic growth. And we follow with big determination the implementation, not only the moment of decision, but the moment of implementation, because this is the most important and significant reform in the history of Italy. As I said, we need to change for long-term structural reason. We need to be even faster and bolder under the light of the recent development. The recent macroeconomic data outlined a difficult picture for the Eurozone. 
the economic activity is slowing down and in particular in Italy struggles to recover. Unemployment rem remains too high, 12.3%. And uh, also, if in the first six months of government, we have a little increasing of jobs, 80,000. And uh, inflation too low. In, rec in recent years, in face of disappointing economic data, both governments and international institutions have been overly optimistic then forced to postpone the beginning of recovery for Italy in the Eurozone. But the weakness, fragility of the recovery suggests structural flaws which are worsened by the persistent resection. I want to be very clear. If Europe is only austerity and abstract rules, our continent has no future. Europe is at a crossroad. Without a broader engagement, our populations will be increasingly far from the idea of Europe, which animated our fathers. The idea of Europe, of ideals of peace, democracy, freedom. Without significant discontinuities in our economic policies, the European countries are risking the severe consequence of stagnation and deflation. Negative political repercussions will clear. We decided to respect and fulfill 3% exactly to give the message not in the interest of Italy, but for necessity of Eurozone. In this context, Italian presidency has proposed to focus the European strategy on growth and jobs by stimulating investment, structural reforms, and the internal market. And uh, we are confident about the program of President Juncker to realize 300 billion of, of euro of investments in the next weeks. As the long-term analysis of the European Commission pointed out, the Italian public finances are sound and sustainable. Thanks to the bold pension system reforms that we have completed and our high primary budget surplus. This is very interesting. In the last 20 years, in the last 21 years, 20 times Italy obtained a primary surplus despite 2009. Obviously, we have a very important debt. This is the problem. But I think the performance of Italy could be obviously will be better in the future, not because we don't respect the primary surplus. 21 years of the past, 20 times primary surplus achieved. These efforts are for us a message very important. Given the unfavorable economic context, in compliance with the common rules, we decide, we decide to adopt a consolidation path. This will allow structural reforms to fully realize their positive effects, avoiding self-defeating restrictive fiscal measures. However, as European Union, we need to take the lead and respond as we always did in difficult moment. Europe always responds with openness, with more integration, more engagement. Of course, Europe will be strong if all its countries are strong. We will change Italy because this is a condition to change Europe. We must absolutely obtain the results in our reforms to give a message of change in Europe. Because Italy, without credibility, is not in condition to give a different message of our continent. The goal of government to, is to implement structural reforms, promoting positive interaction with fiscal policy in a single strategy 
to stimulate and support aggregate demand in the short term and increase the growth potential of the economy. Our fiscal policy will help the recovery, also taking into account the composition of the measures. In an effort to revive consumption and investment, the budget law will intervene sustaining the less affluent families and entrepreneurs. We have already adopted the largest tax reduction on individuals and business in the last decade. Italian taxes have been growing constantly since I have memory. This is now changed. This is time of change. These tax cuts will be confirmed in the budget law. While we will continue stimulating private investment and facilitate access to finance for small and medium enterprise. Further tax reduction will be mainly financed by a broad-based spending review. We want to reduce government spending, make it more efficient, and uh, limiting the effects on growth and employment by cutting waste, waste and privileges. For example, we have already introduced a reform of public procurement, which centralized public uh, purchases and settled the clear benchmarking on prices. The resource that I'm afraid will be used for a significant and lasting tax cut. The government plan for structural reform is based on a specific set of legal and administrative provisions with clear deadlines for the implementations. In 2014, three key initiatives have been already implemented. A reduction of tax, of tax wedge on low labor income, which I mentioned already. We have approved the so-called finance for growth package we have settled the debt arrears of the public administration, also introducing electronic invoicing to provide a structural solution. This is very important also to fight evasion, one of the most important in Italian system. Italy is suffering from lack of credit, which slows down growth, especially given that the backbone of Italy's manufacturing is made by small medium enterprise. It is therefore crucial to attract private investment to finance the economy and infrastructure. It is key to restore normal lending condition to economy. It is required action at the European Union and the national level to address financial market fragmentation and create favorable condition for long-term investment. For this reason it is absolutely important to show how it's, uh, it's absolutely crucial to open the market in Italy with the reform of justice, of public administration, of labor market, finally. Because this is the only way to attract investments. And if today Alitalia is not Italian ownership, but uh, is uh, in the hands of Etihad, if all the companies in this moment from steel to traditional manufacturing is in the hands of foreign investors, this is a good signal. Finally, Italy is open to business, completely open. There is a close link between Italy and Europe on uh, these issues. For that reason, we brought finance for growth on the top of European agenda as one of the government's priorities, exploiting the opportunity of the Italian presidency of the European Union semester. I have a lot of single uh, uh, measures, public guarantee, credit fund, mini bond tools, allowance for corporate equity, private investment in infrastructure projects, in broadband, very important, in natural resource exploitation. We simplified project finance, we approved new tax investment and incentive, we boost foreign long-term investment, uh, real estate investment trust, energy bill, and uh, we generally adopt a number of measures to ease the access to the stock market for small and medium enterprise. I left you the list of initiatives, and I don't enter in the single initiative. Obviously, we think is absolutely important uh, for us to continue 
in uh, this direction only with a process of change in labor market. Because it's absolutely important constitutional reforms, finance for growth, public administration fight against red tape, uh, investment in a, a new idea of justice, create a different educational system, but I believe the most important uh, thing is the process, process of change of labor market. This will represent a crucial correction to one of the weakest parts of our economic institutions. Labor markets in Italy have deeply fragmented in the last 20 years. And a part of politicians believe the defense of a system of 44 years ago is the way to invest in the future. It's impossible to invest in the future, defending only the past. This uh, fragmentation was the result of partial and imperfect reforms, which had a very negative impact on people's life prospect and a negative effect on the productivity. We have at the same time the most flexible and the most rigid labor market in the world because different regimes coexist. The Jobs Act, the law created by our government will bring this fragmentation to will bring this fragmentation to unity simplify the norms of italian labor market in a single umbrella a single code i smile but more correctly i must cry when i explain to myself and you the numbers of article of laws in italy in the labor market 2,134 articles. I smile, but maybe we'll be better cry. Now we changed. With the Jobs Act, the reduction in a single code with the 50, 55 article will be possible in the next months, in the next weeks. This is a radical change of revolution. Also because this reduced the power of judges in the life of companies, of investors. And this is the reason also for the which we decided to change the symbol, the totem of the labor market rule in Italy, Article 18. Article 18 regards the possibility to fire without, in the future, a role of judge and of lawyer. I know in UK this is normal. I decided to fire a man, a woman. I give a very important indemnity established by law, but this is finished. In Italy, in the company, in the companies uh, with more 15 uh, people, there are a very confused procedure with the possibility to go in front of judge or to decide the indemnity or for the possibility to reintegration in the company. This is a lack of uh, certainty for ent for entrepreneur. This is a problem. We reduce, we cancel this power. But at the same time, we think about the future of welfare state in Italy in different way. We reduce the division between uh, the people with rights and the people without rights. We reduce the incredible system with a lot of differences between uh, small enterprise and big enterprise. And we give a message very clear. Investment in Italy is not only possible, it's an opportunity. Labor market norms will be more modern, more inclusive, more predictable, and easier than they are now for both Italian and foreign investors, Italian and foreign workers. This is the conclusion. Finally, we convinced our 
leaders and our colleagues of uh, party and our other parties, globalization is not a problem for Italy. Closed, very uh, prudent, uh, very worried. Globalization is the opportunity with one billion of new consumers who have the possibility to invest in high quality and in products of uh, uh, high level. It's incredible for Italy. Refuse the challenge. Refuse to look at the world with uh, big possibilities. More the labor markets, other measures are underway. We are working to improve the efficiency and the stability of the legal system. We will continue the credit market reform to increase the number of sources for corporate funding. We will review the state guarantee system for small, medium enterprise lending for a more efficient use. Finally, we are streamlining governance with a view to attracting, cutting the tape through the establishment of a dedicated touring mechanism and support the whole investment process. Next year, Italy will host the Expo in Milan on feeding the planet energy for life. We hope you will come and visit and we are focusing the efforts of our government to make sure the Expo is a moment of reflection on crucial environment and the sustainability issues. And for me, as Prime Minister in Italy, also for a very little business reason, Italy uh, products in food in this moment uh, are a market of 30 billion euro. But Italian sounding products have a market of 90 billion euro. So one third is of Italian sounding products is Italian. Two third is not Italian. We lost the possibility to invest, for example, in the food, wine, and other sectors. At the same time, Expo will remind the world once more about the quality, the beauty, and the modernity of made in Italy production. From mechanism to pharmaceutical to fashion and food, trade and investment opportunities are aplenty. When I was mayor of Florence, I remember a discussion with the most important company of my city, maybe you think uh, the most important company in Florence could be a cultural company? No. A touristic company? No. An advertising company? No. The most important company is oil and gas in Florence. GE, oil and gas, General Electric. And when I met Jeff Immelt, the CEO of oil and gas, the CEO of GE, and so the owner of oil and gas G in Nuovo Pignone in Florence, he told me, I think that the most important thing of your country is not a masterpiece, is not a cultural uh, a painting, is not uh, a book, is the quality of your engineering. Italy's quality of engineering is one of the most interesting assets of our country. But in our narrative, in our storytelling, this is always uh, at the, the corner, not in the center of discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, I have an almost finished. Let me express two final remarks. First, Italy is back. Italy is back. We are working hard to deliver the change that our country is asking. But Italy is back to be Italy, a country of hope, not a country of preoccupation. Italy is, uh, and we remain from many viewpoints, an extraordinary country. Many of you will rejoice by visiting Italy in the weekends, in the holidays. This will stay. I'm very happy for uh, this uh, choice. Good food, good weather, good spirit will stay. Incomparable beauty, okay. Landscape, okay. I'm very proud for that. But we are working hard to make Italy an extraordinary place which works in the most ordinary manner possible. A country where regulations are clear, rules are clear, where the bureaucracy is 
efficient, where taxes are fair and lo lower than they are now. Higher, it's impossible, so don't worry. This will be good for us, and also, I'm sure, induce many of you to come to Italy more often for business, to invest, and to leverage on the unique qualities of our countries. We can create a stronger Italy also because we make a stronger European Union. And uh, given I am here in a country that often debates about membership of European Union, let me add a final ambition. We need to stay together, but we also need to steer the European uh, Union in direction that persuades our countries. We need to exit oh, a cold, technocratic uh, approach. We need to abandon to excess bureaucracy and excess formally, formality. We need to go back to the substance that they united us in the first place. More freedoms, more openness, economic growth, social growth. I, I am in this uh, semester the president of European uh, institutions. And uh, I, two days ago, I believed uh, what is the most important things, Matteo, you do as Italian presidency? And I believed, okay, maybe the important decision of Juncker to create a program of 300 billion for investments. No. Maybe the decision to maintain 3%, but to give a message of flexibility. Maybe the decision to invest in a new generation for the leadership of Europe, as uh, with Federica Mogherini as representative for Italian government, as I representative for foreign politics in Europe. No. I think the most important things uh, I do was uh, August 20. During my holiday in Tuscany, obviously, I decided to visit for one day Erbil and Baghdad during the most difficult moment before the strikes. Because I received in my mobile a picture of a voluntary Italian man very important in international cooperation with the picture of children not killed, executed. I remember when I was a kid, 20 years, I remember Srebrenica, 1995. I remember the moment in which the women are abused in front of the husband. And the moment in which husbands are killed in front of wives. I remember the genocide in the silence of international community, in the silence of European institutions. I decided to join uh, the voluntaries in uh, Erbil uh, to give the message Europe is a community of value, but not only economic values. I know here is the hurt of financial Europe. Maybe this is the hurt of financial world. And I believe in the power of finance. I believe in the possibility of finance. My city was built by finance. Without finance, it's impossible in Florence to believe about masterpieces or painting. But we stay together not only because we share financial values. We stay together because we are a community of destiny, a community of values, a community of ideals. So for this reason, obviously, our ambition is to uh, bring back Italy to lead Europe not only for the quality of engineering, 
not only for the possibility of investment, but also to give this message of hope for the next generation. Thank you very much. Prime Minister, thank you for that excellent speech and for the tour of the horizon. Uh, it's good to know that Italy is open for business. We share your passion for openness. It is actually liberalization that made the city of London great. And now may I hand over to the policy chairman, Mark Boliat, who spends a lot of time building our relations with our European partners to conduct the question and answer session. Thank you very much for coming. We have time for a small number of quick questions. May I please have the first one? <coughs> In the middle. <laughs> Microphone. Prime Minister, can I also congratulate you on an excellent speech and for setting out so clearly and passionately uh, your reform program for Italy. Uh, at the European level, as you know, there's much talk about the importance of a capital markets union from President Juncker and others. Uh, and I'd like to know how you see the opening up of Europe's capital markets playing a role in the long-term reform of Italy's economy. The question is the opening up of the capital markets in reforming the European economy. Yes, it's correct if I bring three, four questions together, it's okay for you. We will do anything you say, Prime Minister. <laughs> a second question. Mark this Garvin. Is the, this is the only place in which I have the possibility to give a message very strong. Not in the Italian government. <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> Prime, Minister. Prime Minister, congratulations on an excellent speech. You were right to remind us that Italian manufacturing is the second largest in Europe. Can you elaborate on the measures you're going to put in place to promote the success of Italian manufacturing and exports? Good. Okay. A third. And a third question. In the middle there, please. Microphone to the middle. Thank you. The useful measures you announced recently was the reduction of a crazy taxation called IRAP in Italy. Uh, the initial reduction was 10%, but uh, we would welcome more news uh, about the future cancellation, about a taxation really hampers companies which uh, are in desperate need to hire more Italians to basically give more employment and uh, let the companies grow. Thank you. So. I start from the last question because it's a very Italian question. <laughs> uh, I believe absolutely important for us to reduce the taxation. We began with IRAP. IRAP is um, taxation for the labor forms, for the labor companies. We reduced 10%, more or less 2.3 billion and euro, and we reduce at the same time 10 billion euro the taxation for the people under 1,500 uh, 1, euro every month. So this is the first. Obviously, our strategy is reduce the gap from the cost of labor market, for the cost of labor and the salary. Uh, please help me to be very clear. There are two strategies in uh, Europe. The first is a strategy very easy in theory. We reduce the cost of labor and uh, you reduce the salary. Few countries 
some countries decided this strategy. For me, this is a tra tragic, tragic mistake for Italy because the cost of labor is high, but the cost of salary is low. It's, in, it's an incredible gap between cost of labor and cost of salary. My personal position is that Italy needs a radical change increasing the salary of workers. Because if we reduce the, the, the salary, we have a mm, commitment, uh, for me a mistake, in which Italy will be able to compete with new countries, with new emerging markets, but it will be impossible for us to compete with them. And so the first will be Spain, and then North Africa, and then Far East. We must invest in high quality of production with an increasing of salary of people. And for this reason, the difficulty now is reduce the cost of labor. Next year, we order two millions more, two billions more of reduction of taxation for labor market, order two. But, and this is the point, with not a problem for employer. Second uh, is the uh, promotion of uh, manufacturing. Uh, yes, in Italy manufacturing is the number two. Uh, the result of Expo is most interesting about in Europe. I think the only way to invest in manufacturing is reduce the power of bureaucracy, reduce the problem of training and the formation and education, reduce the cost of business contest. In all the ways, I think impossible for us um, a strategy of substitution to entrepreneur. We must reduce the power and the costs of uh, um, problems, of uh, bureaucracy, and give freedom to entrepreneurs. Obviously, with a strategy of promotion uh, in the foreign markets, and our project created by Deputy Minister Calenda was a very important uh, plan for made uh, in Italy for 50 billion of euro in the next two years of export. The third, capital markets in Europe. I think this is a very important uh, question because uh, the role of uh, markets in uh, Europe uh, in this moment is not the same level of other continents. I decided to organize my first trip in the United States, starting not by Washington, not from New York City, but from Silicon Valley. Because, for a few reasons, first of all to give a message of future, but also because I think the relation between uh, four investors, traditional investors in ideas in Silicon Valley, good relation of education, good relation with the universities, and the possibilities to give an op to idea, and not only to men who have the, 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 the um, guarantee, I think is one of the most interesting uh, uh, model around the world. In this field, obviously, we have some problems. We must absolutely encourage everything of financial instruments, but we are a different uh, institutions in the, in the central banks. So I think there is a very important responsibility of uh, London as a capital of finance in this uh, continent and maybe around the world. 
but we must also discuss for the countries of Eurozone about the role of European Central Bank for the future. Now, therefore, for me, it is absolutely important to conclude a process of reforms. Next six months, everything will be completed. Because after the conclusion of process of reforms, we'll be able to stay very, very, very determined in Europe to discuss about it. Prime Minister, thank you very much. I'm afraid that time has run out. You gave us a wonderful speech and you have answered three questions on a widely differing range of subjects admirably. We greatly appreciate that. Can I thank the audience for coming? But most of all, can I thank you again for giving such an excellent speech and answering the point so well. Thank you, thank Prime you Minister. So Ladies and gentlemen, could we ask you to remain seated until the Prime Minister and the delegation have left the Great Hall? Thank you.